take you for a walk. Please take me for a walk. So listen, of course we could have done this interview in Bandra, in Mumbai. Yeah. But uh, you know, so much more glamorous to be doing it in Toronto, yeah. and to be doing it in a foreign location because foreign locations, NRIs have been such a pivotal part of your career. Yeah. So here's what really intrigues me about you. Um, you know, on the one hand, you're a very influential, hugely successful filmmaker. Your um, movies are consumed by millions of people around the globe. But I also know that you have piles, that you lost your virginity at 26, that, you know, that when you tweet about your contemporaries' films, you're mostly lying. And I know all this because you've told us all this, yeah. right? So I'm just wondering, Karan, if too much information stops us from taking you as seriously as we should as a filmmaker. If you taking me seriously is on the basis of some honesties in my life, then that would be a real pity. I mean, you would like, I would like you to judge me for what you see on, on screen and not for what you know of me as a human being. You know that you're not taken as seriously. Not, by my own fraternity, never. I don't think they take me seriously as a filmmaker. They respond to my success as a, like, you know, the big glamorous, big movie maker with big movie stars, achieving success because of, like, powerful or influential reasons. Not because I really feel what I write and I really project what I, what I really feel within and what I, when I make a movie, all of me is in it. If I show you intensity, you might find it frivolous because you think I'm frivolous. Or if I show you depth, you might annul it by saying that, like, what does he know? He talks about his hemorrhoids. Uh, you know, and, and when I made a film like My Name is Khan, where I was trying to make a commentary, I realized that eventually, even now in interviews, I'm still spoken of, like, you make big glamorous people films about, like, rich people. I mean, I always haven't done that. In my way, in my book, emotions are universal. I mean, I think heartbreak is something that is the only one emotion that unifies the entire universe. And you have no idea. You have to enter my social media zone and just know the kind of things that people say I about read. me. I began by anger. It went into indifference. And I'm happy to report it's all about amusement now. I laugh, now laugh loudly when they call me all kinds of names on a daily basis. And I seem to annoy people sometimes. There's a 20% section that gets annoyed by me. Like, you know, I've reached Toronto, I'm doing a master class here, I've been to Harvard earlier this year, I judge a reality show, suddenly one fine day you'll turn the TV and watch me hosting a talk show, Coffee with Karan, with celebrities. So, I mean, like, I'm all over the place. What can you do? Which is the perfect time to stop and have coffee. You want to have coffee with Karan? Come on, let's do it. Can you tell me this? Uh, Shah Rukh had once said to me that that you're a very filmy filmmaker, and he meant that as a compliment. But your influences, when you talk, uh, you talk about watching Almodovar, you talk about watching Guru Dutt. So where does that filter in? You know, it kind of blends in with your own sensibility and finds a way in some part of your work. I can't do that kind of cinema. I, I'm not equipped. I don't know how to. And probably I'm a different human being from what Almodovar was or Guru Dutt. I don't even want to put myself anywhere close to that league. I mean. There's no question of that. But when I saw Guru Dutt's angst in his cinema, his pain that he projected, I find myself reconnecting with that pain at this stage of my life. Like for me, when I'm making Edil and Mushkil and it's all about unrequited love, I always felt Guru Dutt carried the baggage of love very strongly in his cinema. But that doesn't mean that work or that magic I can create. I can love it and appreciate it, which is also what makes me an audience much more than a filmmaker. But can I be that filmmaker? No, I can't. I don't know how to. You know, Karan, I first interviewed you almost 15 years ago, just before Kabhi Khushi Kabhi Gam released. And I remember I'd also talked to your mom and she told me that you were such a pallu ke piche type child. She said she didn't know how you would get on the set the first day of Kuch Kuch Hota and actually make yeah, a film. Yeah, yeah. So has your entire learning just been on the set? I didn't know anything and I, I fooled my way through Kuch Kuch Hota, a large parts of it. I think Nikhil Advani has been a tremendous influence on me understanding the grammar of Hindi cinema. I knew three things on it and it's very simple. I knew close, mid and wide and I knew my story. I knew when I needed to be close to a character, when, when, when being slightly distant was okay and then being completely wide was the requirement and the need of that moment or hour. I didn't know any better, I didn't know lenses, I didn't know like what you could do with equipment. I discovered the Steadicam uh, way back in 97 when I was shooting Kuch Kuch Hota and realized that oh some fun could happen with this piece of like equipment which I thought was a toy that was moving randomly. Uh, I didn't know anything, Nikhil taught me some of the grammar, Adi taught me syntax and I 
my love for Hindi cinema taught me everything else. My childhood, which was actually fairly lonely in that respect. But his cinema was my sibling. It was my sibling right through. It was my friend, my mate, my playmate, my everything. So watching Earl, even the VHS phase was a big blessing for me. It was when video came out and I saw the Earl Vintage Raj Kapoor or Gurudat. And somehow I was an old soul, I think. Gurudat was the first VHS film, no? Yes. Yeah, was, I watched Piyasa first. And like for me, when I used to see those movies and hear those songs, I used to go insane. And at nine years old, it was not normal for a kid to know the words of Vakni Kya. It was not normal to kind of just hum along, to go to a preview a couple of years later to see a film called Av and actually ask my mother questions about infidelity. But somehow it never spoiled or scarred me, it made me evolve. And I think a lot of that may not be a reflection in my earlier pieces of work, but I was only trying to make commercially successful films for my production. When I made Kuch Kuch Hota Hai and there's a moment where there's a Hindu Pandit uh, delaying a marriage, it's intercut with, a, with an Islamic prayer. To me it was like I need both belts. Come in. You I were want, catering. I want Delhi UP to like my film as much as the Bombay City. I want like the heart of Punjab to love my film as much as people down south. I want to cater. My father made five unsuccessful films. I needed to make that hit film and do what it takes. That blended with some of my urban aesthetics and I was only trying to make commercial successes. Today I feel the stakes are high. But today I'm not going to look and say I didn't make the biggest hit of the year. It's not going to bother me. It used to bother me a lot at one point in time. It doesn't bother me anymore. Really? No. If I don't make the biggest hit of the year, I don't know. If I make a bad film, it'll bother me. If I make a film that's dissed by, by people who I care about and by generally an audience and they hate it and I fail them, that's going to affect me like nothing else. So, Karan, was there a moment when you felt like now I've understood the grammar of filmmaking? You know, through those seven films, Aedil e Mushkil is the seventh. On Kalahuna. That's when you felt like you... I was a writer on that film, I wasn't the director Nikhil was. But I felt like he needed a lot of like support coming in. And I felt like I, I had to kind of tune in as both the director and writer on that film. It was completely Nikhil's baby and his vision. But I felt very strongly that I had to be his big support because he had been mine. So it was almost my payback to be with him. And that's when I felt like tuned in to what film direction is really. It amounts to writing plus instinct of the moment about how you see characters um, on screen and how you should shoot them. I remember very clearly and academically I'll tell you this, Ravi Chandran who was the DOP on My Name is Khan. And I, was, I used to love the trolley. I used to love the approach to a character. The drama? Yeah, just the drama. And he told me, he said, why are we moving the camera, Karan? I had no explanation because I love the trolley. I love the way it approaches the character. I like the drama, the music could swell at the moment. He's like, only move the trolley when the character moves or his mind moves or her mind moves. Why else should a, cam a, a camera move? I saw complete virtue in that statement. Similarly, when I was shooting Edil e Mushkil, like me, Amrita and Anil, Amrita was my production designer, Anil Mehta, very, very respected and prolific director of photography. He was like, Yaar, Karan, kuch alag karte hai, nahi karte. It was like, let's do something different or not do it at all. You're making a love story, let's shoot it. In our way, let's try and be edgy. Let's shoot in live locations. Let's not put up sets. Your characters are saying real things, feeling real emotions. Why should they be in unreal zones? So it's also the people around you that mold you who you are. Ranbir actually has taken me like aside. Thank you. Has taken me aside and told me, every scene, give me one word. One let's word. Let's make this a thing. Give me one word about how I should act that scene. Give me one word. And we'll play it like that. And it was a game. So right before the take, he was like, he would look at me and he calls me cage. As in K-A-J-E, not C-A, not in a cage. He says, cage, word. And I was like, disappointment. And I would be like, deep hurt. He said, that's two words, give me one. I was like, hurt. And, and then he was like, okay, word for this. I was like, disinterested. Word for this, anger. Word for this, jealousy. And he would play it. And he would, he was brilliant. And I would say, I said, can I give you one word for this take and another for another? And he was like, totally. And that's how we played this entire performance. It was one word. When he was singing that one, he sung the entire song in two minutes in the close-up. You've seen a bit of it in the teaser. He sung the whole song. And I was like smiling heartbreak. You know, that's all I want. Like, God bless you even if you broke my heart. Like, let the universe bless you. You broke my heart, I still love you. Give me that in that song. Don't give me anger. Give me like submission to heartbreak. That's it. So it was like that. Sort of almost spiritual, no? It that was, look on his face. It was amazing. And that's one thing. I cannot work with somebody who I don't think I like as a human being. Really? No matter how big a star you are, if I don't think I like you, I cannot work with you. It's as simple as that. You fall in love with your actors? No. Don't Never. you have to? 
No, I fall in love with with the people. The characters. Oh, I'm sometimes not. Sometimes I'm distant from them also. Sometimes I'm in love. But I I never make the mistake of falling in love with my actor because I mean it's going to tell on the film. And mm. I love Randy. I love him to pieces. He makes me smile. Even now, he sent the most ridiculous things to me on the phone. He say he and he is completely off out of bounds with me. He crack like completely like out of line jokes. And somebody went around and said like, dude, like you know, he's much younger than you. How do you allow it? And it's like I love him because he he means well and he's a great heart and a great actor. And his process is that he's he, a great actor. And you know, yes. when you see him in Edil. You know that you've not seen him like this because what he has in Adil and he's not had in any other film is a certain sense of abandon, even in emotional scenes. Let me tell you all the business decisions, all the success, all the accolades you get, all the wonderful things that happen in your life amount to nothing when you fade in love. I felt it twice in my life. The first time I was young enough to handle it. The second time I wasn't able to. Because the older you get, the tougher it is. You know, because you just can't. I used to walk into my office and I was like. I don't want to meet anyone. I don't want to face the world. I want to go into a shell or just be away. I, I travel the maximum that area because, because being with myself is my new therapy. You know, walking streets of cities where people don't know me is where I, I actually feel I can relate to it. It was on one of those walks when I went for my mother's treatment in New York, and I thought of this story in ten days. I've written Adil and Mushkil in ten days. Ten days flat. I remember calling Arthi Shetty, who's my friend. She knew about my my feeling as well. And I narrated the script to her. She says, "Make it. You feel it." Mm. Do you have current a space where you write? Do you have a method of writing, or can you do it anywhere? I'm very strange in my process of writing. Tell. I I talk while I'm walking streets to myself, and I could come across like a lunatic, but I do. So you uh, could just be walking here, and you'd be talking. Memory, and I never write. Uh, what are you talking? Scenes. What are you saying? My scenes. I'm talking about my scenes to myself, and then I go and I record it on on voice note, and uh, that's how I write my script. But I can narrate my film to you without a single. Page right. I can read it out. This is all here. I don't write. I can't write. I like sometimes to transcribe my thoughts. But what do you tell yourself when you're walking up and down? You're just I mean, you're writing. formulating the scene. Yeah, yeah. And I'm writing. And like she says, and to kya hua? And he says, yeah, yeah. But I'm just talking like that. Then I stand by a pole suddenly in the middle of a street, and I'll think and I'll reminisce. And, it, and now I'm recognized. That's a big problem because I can't. <laughs> I could very well so come across think like you're this, bonkers? A, a so a completely solid filmmaker in India loses the plot when he catches a flight. But I know that's my process. You ask me my process. This is what it is. It's weird. Just because you know some of my films don't have those golden leaves attached to it, that doesn't mean that I don't make good cinema. I'm proud about the movies I make. I love the songs I put into them. I love the beauty that it projects, and I absolutely love. There's nothing like a good soulful Hindi film watch. I agree. Cheers.